Thyroglobulin globulin is a tumor marker routinely used in the follow-up of uh, thyroid cancer. The protein is not specific for uh, tumors or cancers, but it's very specific for the thyroid gland. So if someone has had their thyroid gland removed, as is customarily done when you treat thyroid cancer, there should be no circulating thyroglobulin in this patient's blood. Hence, if the physician measures thyroglobulin in the bloodstream, commonly with an immunometric immunoassay, then uh, he or she can judge whether the patient still has residual tumor or recurrent tumor if the thyroglobulin is detectable or uh, particularly if it is very high. Uh, and conversely, if the thyroglobulin by a sensitive immunometric assay is undetectable, which means typically less than 0.1 to 0.2 nanograms per milliliter for some assays less than 0.5 nanograms per milliliter then it is pretty certain that the patient has not got any residual or recurrent thyroid carcinoma. So as I said uh, most of the time this testing is done with immunoassays. However in up to 30% of thyroid cancer patients, there are autoantibodies in the patient's blood against thyroglobulin. And these autoantibodies interfere in thyroglobulin immunoassays. Most likely, uh, when this interference happens, the result which is given by the assay will be false low. So some cases of recurrent or residual cancer may be missed if uh, the standard immunoassays are used and a lot of energy is expended in laboratory testing to prevent this. So, for example, we would uh, typically always measure these autoantibodies alongside the thyroglobin to at least get an idea which patient samples may be affected by this false low interference. Unfortunately, beyond this, we can't do much. We can give the physician a hint that the result in some cases might not be reliable, but we often or almost always, in fact, can't give them a true result. The consequence of this is further investigations which are much more costly and sometimes invasive. To remedy these problems of immunoassays, we have developed an assay which uses uh, mass spectrometry to measure thyroglobulin. The principal uh, and important thing which happens in this assay is that at the beginning, before we actually measure anything, we digest the patient's serum sample with an enzyme which is, so to speak, an equal opportunity destroyer of proteins. So it will uh, cut all the serum proteins into small pieces. It, uh, this includes uh, thyroglobulin and any thyroglobulin autoantibodies which may be present. These little pieces are predictable. This enzyme cuts only at certain amino acid sequences and hence uh, you can predict which fragments of thyroglobulin will be present in the gemisch at the end of the digestion. We then use antibodies, assay antibodies on little magnetic beads to fish some of these thyroglobulin specific fragments out of the whole soup of other protein fragments clean those beads up, elute the thyroglobulin from the beads and measure it highly specifically on a mass spectrometer. This allows us to circumvent the problem of the autoantibodies because as they have been all digested they can no longer interfere with the immunocapture here. This allows us in virtually all cases of autoantibody interferences to give an accurate result. The only proviso is a little bit that the mass spec assay at this stage is not quite as sensitive as the very best immunoassays. So we would still typically recommend to first measure the patient sample by an immunoassay of the latest flavor, which can measure down to 0.1 nanogram per milliliter, and then ask specifically for testing with the mass spec assay if the antibodies in this assay are positive. So you have this result in the immunoassay which tells you the patient is most likely cured but you're doubtful because there are autoantibodies then remeasure it on the mass spectrometer which has a detection limit of 0.5 nanograms per milliliter and if uh, the result with the mass spec is less than 0.5 then you can be fairly confident that in fact uh, the result with the immunoassay, the low one, was indeed correct. 
And this allows us virtually to eliminate all the uh, interference problems.